everyone, Live It Like Lisa here. And what I have today is a whole heap of witches potion bottles and apothecary jars to show you guys. But mainly I wanted to show you the different things I'm filling them with. So this video is not really going to be showing you how I've made them, but I will go through it. I'll, I'll show you each one and go through what I've actually done to create them. But I mainly want to show you the different things that I'm filling them with. Uh, things that kind of look authentic and different things you can find in and around your home at cheap craft supplies and that sort of thing. All right, so for the first four jars, these little jars I just picked up recently from Spotlight. So these ones here, all I've done is I've just got some black acrylic paint and watered it down a little bit and just brushed it over the glass just to make it look a little bit less clean. <laughs> And all these uh, labels I found from the internet and just printed them off to the size that I wanted and stuck them on with some uh, PVA glue. The little charms I've had, all the charms and the chains and that sort of thing have all been in my collection for ages. But if you don't have any, you can find them on eBay. Uh, you can get like a whole bag of different charms for only a couple of dollars. So all I've done with this one is just wrap some cord around the top, put the little fairy charm on and then just wrapped the cork in, this is a little piece of drop cloth and I've just dirtied it up with some acrylic paint and wrapped a string, uh, a cord around that as well. So for the pixie dust, what I have here is just a selection of glitters that I've had in my collection and I'm just going to fill, or not fill the whole jar up, but just put these glitters in the jar, mix it all up. So that's our pixie dust. And what I'm also going to add to this, I have some, these were off a little butterfly sticker. You can get these from the reject shop, um, the little stickers. They used to be butterflies looking like that. So I've just peeled off the wings and I'm going to sit the wings in there as well, as if they're like little fairy wings, captured fairy wings. So that's my pixie dust jar next we have some mummy dust now all i've done with this one again we've just rubbed some black watered down acrylic paint over the top stuck a label on this is just some gauze like you know the bandage stuff that you put on a wound um, i've just wrapped that around and stuck it on and this was an actual earring i'm pretty sure these earrings were from ebay as well so i've just stuck that in the cork and what we're going to put in this. Now, if you're a smoker and you collect some of your smoking ash, or if you burn incense or something like that, that ash stuff would work perfectly as well. But I'm just using some corn flour just to put in as mummy dust. Because my idea would be to have it slightly on a grey tinge to the mummy dust. Give that a bit of a shake. So that's our mummy dust. Again, just talcum powder, corn flour, regular flour, any sort of flour would be perfect to use as mummy dust. So for the dragon scales, I've just um, dirtied up the bottle again. We've got our dragon scales label. And like I said, all of the labels I found on Pinterest and just printed them off to size. And then on the cork, I've just stuck a, this was an old necklace pendant that I had in my collection and it looked like a bit of a dragon to me so I just stuck that on there. Now what I've used for the dragon scales and I saw this on another YouTube video so I can't steal this as my own idea but what they've actually used is the scales off the pine cone so that's the pine cone and I've just ripped the scales off them and then just painted them with some iridescent nail polish and I think they come up so cool like to me they actually yeah, I think they look like dragon scales. So that's what you can use as dragon scales. Holographic nail polish is actually good, which is what most of these are painted with, like these blues and, and greens. They're like a holographic, so they, they give that scaly sort of appearance. So yeah, that's what I've used as dragon scales. So they are going in that jar. 
There's my dragon scales in there. Now, next we have dragonfly wings. So this is my little bottle. All I've done to this one is just wrap some jute cord around the top and found a little dragonfly charm that I had in my collection. Now, what I'm going to use for dragonfly wings is I have these little butterflies in my collection that I'm not really ever going to use these anymore. I bought these during my scrapbooking days. But I just thought if you have a look at just these wings here, to me they look very much like dragonfly style wings. So I'm just going to cut these off. They have got a look of a dragonfly wing to me. So I'm just going to use those as my dragonfly wings. Okay, so that's my dragonfly wings. The next one. <laughs> so this one I've just decorated. I've just used a brown paper lunch bag to use as the top. So I just sat that on top, wrapped a bit of a cord around there. I found a little dog um, charm in my collection that I just added. I wrapped some um, black leather cord around the top. So this one's Fur of Werewolf. Now, if you're not lucky to have your own werewolves in your backyard like we are, um, <laughs> you can just use some dog fur. So I've got genuine werewolf fur here that is going in. No, really, it's just my, it's actually genuine husky fur. So I've just actually just pulled some fur off my dog <laughs> and we're using that as werewolf fur. So that's one idea. There you go there. So the next little jar we have here, this is just like a spice type jar that I got from the reject shop. This is black cat whiskers and all I've done with this one is just wrap some jute twine around the top, uh, put a little bit of burlap on the top as well and then stuck a, this was an old ring I think I had. Any old jewellery, costume jewellery that I used to have that I don't lo no longer wear, I keep it all because all the beads and the, the jewels and that sort of thing that are on them, they're, they're really good for craft projects. So that's just another tip. If you know, If you've got costume jewellery that you no longer wear and you do craft, Definitely keep it because a lot of that stuff, the chain and all that sort of stuff comes in handy. And I've used a lot of it on these ap ap <sighs> witches potion jars. <laughs> I'm not going to say that word anymore. I keep, I keep mucking it up. Apothecary, apothecary. All right. So for black cat whiskers, what I am using is very hard to see, but just some fishing line. I'm just going to cut some pieces of fishing line up. I probably should have got a bit of a thicker piece, but um, yeah, I'm just going to cut them into, you know, like whisker size, <laughs> putting them in as I do them. These are probably going to be a little bit hard to see on camera, but yeah. So for cat's whiskers, you can just use a fishing line. So that is my cat whiskers, probably a little bit hard to see them in there, but yeah. That's what I've used for that. This is another little jar that I picked up from the reject shop. And this is graveyard dust. So again, found the label on the internet, on Pinterest. This is just like I was just saying before, all my old jewelry that I no longer used to wear. So I've just wrapped some chain around the top, wrapped some smaller chain around the um, body of the jar, just stuck it with some hot glue. Uh, put a little cross charm on here and then a little key here. And for the chain, I've just gone over it with some black and brown acrylic paint just to dull it down a bit so it's not so bright and shiny. So for graveyard dust or graveyard dirt, I'm just using dirt from our garden. Now, I mean, our property happens to have a lot of red dirt. So <laughs> it's a bit of a weird color, but yeah, that's what I'm going to use for this one. So that's our graveyard dirt in there and give it a swill around just to get the glass all dirty inside. So the next one we have here is uh, spider eggs. Now this actually said spider legs, but I just tried to change it to make it spider eggs eggs now what i'm using for that is i have just some white tiny little white pom-poms here you could also just use little pieces of cotton ball just you know break tiny pieces of cotton ball off and rub them in, into a little 
uh, ball and use them in your um, spider eggs container. Okay, so that's all our spider eggs in there. And I've just decorated this one with just the label. I've just got some Halloween spider webbing and glued it all on. Just hot glued a little spider on the top and that's our spider eggs container. Okay, next one we have is ghost bones. So again, label from Pinterest. This was just the jar I picked up from the thrift store. It's got a cork lid and I've just put a brown paper bag on top, tied it with a bit of cord and then wrapped, this was like an old um, chain that used to be around some boots I used to have back in my goth days. So that was just a bit of chain I had left and it happened to have little skulls already on it, which was good. So what I'm gonna use for the ghost bones is I have these little skeletons here and what I'm actually going to do is just snap the bones off. Okay, so here's my jar of ghost bones. So I've got this tall bottle here. This is Feathers of the Crow and I've just got black feathers in there. That was really easy. So this is like an old oil or vinegar bottle and found the label on the internet. And what I've done here is I've actually put some black acrylic paint watered down and just let it drip down the bottle to create this effect. I've wrapped the top in some jute twine and put a little bit of this. Uh, this is from like usually around Halloween time, that sort of Halloween gauzy type stuff. Just wrap that around the top. This was part of an old, I think it was an actually an old earring. So, I mean, yeah, super long earring. So I've just wrapped that around. For the lid, I've just got this wooden bead that I've just put a bit of jute string through and then that just sits on top like that. So for this next one, this is another tall skinny bottle again. This is snake oil and I did the same technique to this bottle. So I just got some black acrylic paint watered down and then just dabbed it all over the top and let it all just drip down to create that effect. I've just wrapped some jute, thicker jute cord all around the bottle to give it a snake-like feel. And then this is just some broken chain off an old necklace. I've done the bottle top the same. What I'm gonna fill this with is I have a rubber snake here. I'm gonna sit the snake in the bottle. For this one, what we're going to use, green soap. So I'm happy with the way that's looking now. That's my snake venom. Okay, now, so for our next one, we have beetle juice. Now, uh, this was just like a, one of those milk bottle type bottles you can get. I think this was from a thrift store haul. Uh, it had a screw top lid. So what I've done, this actually had a straw through it as well. So I've taken that out. I've just covered the lid with some brown paper lunch bag. I've painted it or dabbed it with some black watered down acrylic paint wrapped a cord around it, stuck a little beetle bug on there. And what we're going to do with this one is I've got some orange soap, again, cheap soap from the reject shop. And we're just gonna fill this up with some orange soap. And while that's filling up, what I've done, <laughs> I didn't have, I can't find any beetles at the moment. So these were actually spiders, like little spider rings. And I've just cut all the legs off and also cut off a pair of legs so that we've got a beetle looking thing with six legs and not eight. So yeah, they, they were actually spiders that I've just turned into beetles. And same with this one. Now this to me still looks like a spider, but we're going to go with it. Like it used to be a spider, but I've just chopped the legs off gave it six legs and we'll just go with it that it's a beetle and we'll sit that in the in the jar as well. Okay, so here's our beetle juice. I'll put the lid on that. I've got to be careful to shake this one up because it's got a hole in the lid. But we'll just spin that around. So I've got my big beetle down the bottom there. The two little beetles are just floating on the side. I don't know if you can really see them that well. 
So that's our beetle juice. Pretty happy with that one. So the next one is our love potion number nine. And this was a, I think it was a maple syrup bottle, which I think looks really, really good. And I've just wrapped some twine around the top. I've put a bit of the lunch bag wrap around the lid and secured it with some more twine and then just use some old necklaces to put some chain around it and these were little charms that were in my collection and I've also attached to it another little cork glass jar that's got some sprinkles of love hearts in as well and love potion number nine I'm just going to fill that with some red soap. What I'm going to add to that is some bit of glittery things that I found off eBay as well as I have this little set here. This was from eBay. I'm going to put a few of those little love heart. I don't know what they are. I think they're for your fingernails normally, but yeah, little love hearts I'm going to put in there. Okay, I just gave it a good mix off camera. So it's fairly mixed in now. And I think that just looks amazing. I love that. I don't know which one's my favorite now. <laughs> so that's my love potion number nine. So red soap and some glitter flakes. Perfect. This is just a Makona coffee jar. And I've just wrapped that into some of that Halloween gauze stuff to make it look almost like a fishing net style. I've wrapped some jute cord around the top here. And then for the lid, I've used some of the black gauzy type stuff, wrapped it around the lid, secured it with some hot glue. I have stuck, still got a lot of hot glue to pull off. I have stuck a starfish on the top there. And I've wrapped some chain around the top. We have a little octopus charm on the side here. And that's just the chain hanging down. And then on this side, I have another little glass vial filled with some seashells and a little fish charm on here as well. And that's our mermaid tears. And what we're going to fill this with is, and they're like an air freshener odor gel beads. And I just thought that's perfect. I'll, I'll just use those. So what I'm going to do is fill my, I've got a, a blue set and a green set. So I'm going to fill my, oh, they smell good too. Fill my jar and just for good measure, I'm going to put a little bit of glittery flakes in there as well. So that's our mermaid tears. That looks amazing actually, if I don't say so myself. <laughs> That looks so good. Have a look at that. How nice does that look? So that's our mermaid tears. I think this is my favorite one, actually. I'm going to make a call on it now. This is my favorite. So that's our mermaid tears. Okay, so this next one is, again, a smaller coffee jar, like a Makona coffee jar. This is the pygmy skulls. And I've just put some twine around the top here, secured it with some hot glue. Again, used a bit more of that gray gauze type stuff. I've stuck a skull on the top and I've used some old chain, necklace chain to wrap around the top and attach a key to that. Now, what I'm using as my pygmy skulls are just some rubber skeleton skulls. Now, what I've got in here is just some coconut fur, or what do you call it, coconut hair. We, I cannot find any Spanish moss in Australia at all. Like, I've searched everywhere. I don't know where where I can get it from, like the craft Spanish moss that you guys have in the US and maybe in the UK as well. We just don't have it. We've got this plastic looking awful green moss at Spotlight that is just disgusting. So I can't find it anywhere. So that's the only alternative I've found so far is like a coconut 
fur or coconut hair. So that's what I'm using at the bottom. Now for my pygmy skulls themselves, these are just some little rubber things that go on the top of pencils. And what I would thought I would try and do is to cover these with a little bit of clay to make them look more like a pygmy head, like a, rather than the skull, but make it more look like a head. So I've just got some air dry clay. I've never used this stuff before, so bear with me. We're gonna give it a go. All right, so my pygmy skulls have dried now, and I just think they look a little bit more, um, I mean, authentic's probably not the right word, but a little bit less plasticky than they used to. Um, so yeah, I'm just putting those in as my little pygmy skulls. And I mean, you don't need to go to this detail, but I actually enjoy it, so that's why I do it. Okay, so there's my pygmy skulls. I actually like the way they look in there now. So cool. <laughs> so that's that one. Yeah, so this one here is my magic mushroom juice. So this is another little milk bottle style bottle that I just picked up from the thrift store. Got my label off Pinterest. I've wrapped a heap of jute string around the top. I've covered the lid with um, some burlap and then stuck some of that gauze stuff around the top. Just pulled a plastic bit of branch off that and stuck that there as well. So I'm just going to make some mushrooms to put in there anyway out of the clay. So we'll do that now. drying but I've just given them a quick paint and we'll put them in now I'll put all the smaller ones in but that's all right okay so there's our mushrooms in the jar now for our spider venom, this is just another little jar I got from the thrift store and also it's a cork, a cork jar. Um, just wrap some jute twine around the top, age the label a little bit, put a little spider charm on there. Now for the spider venom, I'm just going to fill it with some blue, I've got some blue soap. So just some of that cheap soap again in blue. And then I'm just going to drop a couple of those spiders in there. So that's our spider venom with the spiders inside the jar. I love that blue, that looks really good. <laughs> and the last one we have is our unicorn horn. So again, this is just a little jar from the reject shop. I've just wrapped some leather cord around the top and the bottom and just wrapped a bit of leather cord around the lid as well. And I've just put a little fairy star sitting on top. So for the unicorn horn, um, I'm just gonna use that clay again and fashion up a unicorn horn as best as I can. I know they're not really looking like a unicorn horn, but I mean, once they're in the jar, I think they'll be fine. <laughs> it sort of reminds me of a really weird pile of poop, but anyway. So yeah, I didn't really know what to do with those much, so I've just sort of painted them and put a little bit of glitter on them. Um, I've just made them a little bit smaller and a little bit skinnier, and then I've just filled the jar with a bit of glitter, and that's kind of just coated all over them. So... Yeah, that's what I've done for my unicorn horn. Well, there you go, guys. I hope that's given you some ideas. If you're thinking of doing witch's potion jars or apothecary jars for your Halloween display, I hope that's given you some ideas of some of the stuff you can put inside them to make them look, you know, kind of authentic, I guess. I'm just really happy with the way they've turned out, and I'm going to be displaying those probably on my entry cabinet this year. 
um because i've got quite a few <laughs> i've got quite a few now and um, i'm still be doing another apothecary bottle decoration video where i actually show you my process on how to decorate them so if if you're still wanting a little bit more information on how to decorate the bottles that video i'm not sure if it'll be coming up before this one or after but like always i'll leave a link to my halloween playlist below so you can see all the videos i've done for last year and this year all in the one place all the projects and diy projects that i've done for halloween they'll all be there and um yeah i i really i really hope you've enjoyed this video if you have give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel subscribing is free all that it will do is just put my videos any new videos that i upload it'll put them in your news feed so that when you log on to youtube you'll see if i've uploaded any new videos so yeah make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos and I will see you guys in my next one. Thanks for watching.